we raised him to be independent, and uh, he is. He's always wanted to be first. He's probably one of the most intelligent, determined guys I know. Extremely hard worker. He loves work. He's a great father, and he's a really, really good leader. He's a teacher, he's a mentor. He's just that guy who doesn't seem to have any fear of anything. Finette, you know, she's quite an athlete, and the passion for Triple Crown sports came out of her as well. She's just as competitive as Dave is, and once you see them both play together, you'd understand it's a pretty neat transaction between them. And I feel like my mom and dad have just flourished this company into something that we can all be proud of. He was about four years old. He picked up his fist and said, I'm gonna knock God out of the sky. That's my boy. He's always exploring and running around on his own. Great imagination to dream up things, games for the kids to play. I know his mother was very athletic and I know his dad was the track coach. We'd put on a softball tournament and Bob would referee and I'd be umping at first base or something and we helped him. The love of sports was right there. When Dave was 19, he went to India with a friend of his, I guess to find themselves, and then Dave really decided that he wanted to come back and become an all-American pole vaulter. You know, he didn't develop physically until he was about 19 or 20, but he just got to where he knew how to bend that pole, and he just became a technician and ended up becoming an all-American pole vaulter. And that's just the way Dave King does it. Once he makes up his mind, he figures out the path and goes for it. One day, we walked home together, and he, he was nice. He was really <laughs> nice. Surprisingly. <laughs> and so that was the first time I noticed him. You know, he's OK. He's nice, and he's smart. <laughs> Both her and her sister were really good runners. Track was the only sport that girls were allowed to do. My sister was into the 440, and I was the 220. Our little school ended up second in the whole state because we won so many races. When he found out Annette could run faster than anybody, he liked it. She was comfortable around the diamond. She was comfortable around the basketball floor. And that was my life. And she was a sparkle at that. She was good looking and his style of woman. And you know, we get another athlete in the family and that pleased everybody. She was cute and she was fun and she was always up for whatever I had in mind. They dated a little in high school, but then when he went to India and came back, he knew that she was the right person for him, and they got married pretty quick, and you know they just started their life together. For the first five years of our business, Dave worked for an insurance company. Dave had progressed as far up the ladder as he felt like he was going to go at the insurance company. He loved what he was doing with his Triple Crown softball tournaments. Dave and I went out to L.A. on a plane flight, and I handed him a magazine article about a guy who had started International Marketing Group for sports. And Dave read that article, and by the time we got back, he said, we're going to do that, but we're going to do it for amateur athletes. And he said, Kirk, I want you to bring your marketing company together with my Triple Crown sports concept, and we'll take this nationwide. He was so worried that I was going to be mad at him. And I just said to him, you hate doing what you're doing. So it's about time. I had to have a little capital to get going. And I remember Dave said, well, I got my van. <laughs> I said, well, I just have to have 10,000. And so in a matter of two weeks, we started the company. And then when we got going, we still played and everything. Kids slept under the benches in the dugout or wherever they could. Sleeping on concrete bleachers, sleeping in the van, building the forts in the van. We were just always together as a family at the ball field. What we were doing was special, and people liked it. It's just finding the business model in amateur sports was really tough. We lost about 350000 the first year and 150000 the next. A lot of our employees went without a paycheck for a month or so. Which meant sometimes getting in your own vehicle and driving across America, figuring out how to trade out lodging and food. Basically, you know, having to risk their own livelihood because they believed in the cause and what was going on. They'd still come back because mom and dad were so passionate about this thing. It was going to work someday. So they stuck, even through some of these tough times. I just felt that if we kept working, that he'd figure it out. They bought into the vision. 
Once Dave King says this is where we're going, his followers are willing to stay with him until he gets there. So this is the method by which we try to organize the things that mattered to me and, and matter to our company with the famous sticky system. You know, when you look at an entrepreneur, they have to do everything. Dad did that. He was selling merchandise. He was setting up the tables. He was bracketing. He was running the award ceremony. He was running the special events. He was playing in the events. He was doing all the accounting work. Right outside his office, there was like a little reception area, and there was a ledge that ran along one side of it. And more than once, Dave would be out there at that ledge hand stapling the middle of the booklets so that they'd be ready for the tournament directors to take out. During those early years, you didn't have another choice. It was kind of survival almost. We had gone through two rough years and I was wondering whether or not we were even going to be profitable. And I said, well, let's get our numbers out and see what we did back in the first year compared to what we thought we were going to do. It looks like we're 90% right on our revenues, but I said our profit's off about 30%. Nothing else, we look better on paper. And he said something to me regarding gentry. By God, we got a pretty good company here and don't want to hear any more out of you. So that's when we kind of rearranged the office, you might say. <laughs> I heard this humongous bang, cussing, and I ran upstairs and they were down on the ground just slugging and beating each other. So I ran out the door and I called for Gordon. I said, Gordon, come up here and help me. And between the two of us, we were able to get them apart, but it created a little bit of friction. For many of those years, we were not profitable, but he just kept forging ahead, teaching and training and giving us all a glimpse of what he envisioned in the future. He always seemed like knew what we should be doing next. He just had difficulty teaching us where that point was. And he was the absolute king of getting people excited about an event and getting their, their heart into it. And it developed into something that I couldn't even believe. You know, once the fire started, man, it just caught all over the country. And in one year, Dave took a $500,000 loss and the following year had a $300,000 gain. Look at the adult slow pitch softball era. And it was a beer drinking community. They love to play. And for them, the business and the play were all meshed together. The slow pitch softball, when we first started playing, was so ridiculously fun. We weren't over-programmed in that era. It was people coming there to participate and party. For every win, you would get a case of beer. Well, you can imagine how many cases of beer we had to bring. They didn't want rules, and they'd give the umpires bad time. Beer drinking in the dugout, cussing. But most of the time, it was tremendous competition, tremendous joy. And more often than not, they probably redlined the fun machine. This is the corporate plan from 1993. There's a weekly calendar in here. Annette, pull cycle, 814. Annette, send uh, direct mail. Annette, this and that. You know, my mom was doing a ton of stuff. She was our database manager before technology, <laughs> you know, snail mail. Everything was done on paper, everything. As computers came out, Annette had to learn the program. She was a good softball player that had a good education. Oh, now I'm the IT person. Mom was really this subtle backbone of Triple Crown Sports, whether it was making time available for dad by watching us kids, or it was doing the odd jobs that the business couldn't afford to do. Annette was always the rock there for him. She's the reason why we're here today, because she was a balancing act for that man over there. And her true calling is to be a mother and to be a grandmother. And she is the most amazing grandmother. And she was my companion, you know, my sounding board, my person I told the story to of, what do you think if we built this and did this and, you know, okay, yeah, that sounds good. Dave is a coach, was a coach, and will always be a coach. He's still coaching right now. In fact, if dad stops coaching, the world will be at a detriment. He understands competition. He understands what's your attitude on the field. You can see if you're putting out 100%, 
That's all he really wanted. It was 100 percent. The minute I call fake bunts, he can tell if someone doesn't have the right challenge yet, and he'll issue that. But, 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 but. He would challenge us to play in the best we could play, but at the same time, I remember having a terrible game. Maybe other coaches have come and yanked you out. He'd always let me work through it rather than being heartbroken and got yanked from the game. He always put us in the proper positions to be successful. And he did the same thing at the office. He really did coach me in baseball. He really did coach me as an employee. He really did coach me as a CEO, and he was a good coach. We have five teams in the building. We organize them by color. Blues or seniors, the kind of olive looking, or the juniors, forest green, or the sophomores, the pinks or the freshmen, and the whites are the eighth graders, and that's our program. There's just always been an equal emphasis between men's and women's sports. Maybe because of what he didn't see when his mom was competing. Mother was a contagious sports person. She wanted to compete her whole life. She never got as much as she wanted. And I think he just identified it as something I can be passionate about and be a leader. He's developed this Colorado Women's Sports Foundation that gives money back to young female athletes. I mean, he ended up building a softball team with his daughter. That really pushed the envelope on girls' fast pitch. And we represented a young lady named Becky Hammond, who was a great basketball player here. And we walked into an opportunity to be in a pro league that she was playing in. One of the funnest, dumbest, and in that order, over and over, funnest and dumbest. But it was the love of women's sports and basketball, and the enjoyment was off the charts. Women's sports is a key area of growth for us. The sports that we're adding, we'll ensure that there's a women's branch to that. You'll see the organization continue to focus in that capacity. He has changed so many people's lives and helped so many people. He wanted us to be successful with the kids, not just on the field, but off the field. We've had 210 players go on and play college, 50 Division I kids, three stud SEC pitchers. He sees things in people that people don't even see in themselves. I didn't know how good I was at softball. And I remember he was like, you could go to a big school, you could go to any school you want. And, and that's what he kind of pulled out of me. One of my friends just graduated high school. And I said, she's going on this weird path right now. And I'm worried about her. So he says, OK, let me make some phone calls. And I'm curious to what he means. He calls me back and he says, I found this college that will take her sight unseen just based on my work and give her a scholarship for softball, and it changed the trajectory of her life. Dave found me in the broom closet, sleeping one off, and brought me outside and said, you have two choices. One is to get your shit and get out of here or find somewhere to go get help. This was 10 years ago, so it was before insurance even came close to paying for a rehab facility. And Dave and Annette paid for me. I'm not finding the words to even express his faith in me and what drive it's given me to be a better father and a better husband and a better person. When we moved into this building, one of the first things we put up was a wall of things that we had done that didn't work. Most people just put up their successes. But I wanted them up so people understood that not everything was a success story. So you got a training facility called The Yard that we bought, thought we were going to be in training academies, and we just weren't. Started our own dot-com, USA Sports Rankings. We invested over a million dollars with us and partners, and that didn't work. We went to Europe and built events in France, and we built events in Australia, and we played there. It was well-received, but it wasn't profitable. We started a division in Canada, and at the end, we couldn't make it work either. We started a hunting magazine because we were all hunters. The actual magazine worked, but it wasn't on the mission plan. And those were all part of our evolution of learning and history of the company. And the reason we are here is because of those things too, just like the things that we've accomplished. The value system that was implemented in 2004 was really my mom and dad's value system. Dave drafted our values on this piece of paper. Work hard, leave on time. Be a problem solver, come to me with solutions. Your family is always number one. People deserve second chances. And treating each other with respect. Without that, we couldn't actually hire top talent. And those values 
he stands by him today. He st stood by him from the day he wrote him. Our business is producing fun events and part of our job in human resources is doing little things to bring joy to people's day for our associates that work at Triple Crown and it's pretty fun to be a part of that. Sticky Fun came out with a full-sided one where you just have a little so they don't wrinkle up too much. You know, I've used the concept of uh, if you're not gonna do it, take it off the wall and don't keep it anywhere, throw it in the trash. You take the evolution of I'm a CEO, I'm building a company, I'm an idea guy, and I got a team of talented people like Kirk and Kent, Gene and Rod and Bill and Roland, and then one day you wake up and say, well, I'm not a very good CEO. In fact, this thing ain't gonna make it if I don't get a little bit better. So he extended himself to learn new things. He spent three years at the Harvard Business School. Really came back and changed the company, realized he needed help. He realizes if the business is to succeed past me, I better make this thing be professional. And what you saw was an organization really leap forward in a big way. Family businesses are complex. Thus, succession is very hard on all parties. It just doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> And it doesn't happen without its challenges, but the care that's been given to hand this off and making sure that all of the associates are on board and involved in and understand has been a wonderful thing to see and be a part of and learn from. It's been a challenge in ways, but I feel like it's the best thing that could happen for the future at Triple Crown. Gary really thought about it as a life goal to be a part of the business. So to see him come on board has meant a lot to me generations different than Dave. So you get this technology and innovation, but you still get the person who grew up as Dave's son. My dad always was searching for that next thing. I know he influences Carrie to be thinking about, okay, we're doing great in this, but let's not stick there. We just acquired a lacrosse company and Carrie also sees other sports that are out there. And without that drive to continuously change the product, continually deepen relationships with customers, this company will look real similar to what's out there already and it won't survive to generation three. I think it's a good transition where my dad has gotten us to somewhere and I think Carrie's going to take us to a different level. My goals are to keep that spirit in front of all the staff recognizing the hard work that mom and dad put in to make this a success exemplifies a value I'd like to see pushed forward. And so this Founders Tribute video is not just a method to thank the past, it's also to thank the staff that are here today that are helping to shape what's going to be a great future. Take them off and put them back up.